43,000. And out of them 43,000, 16,000 men, because very few women work for the railways, it was just men, 16,000 men work for the railway company in its different phases. Of course, when you build a railway station and the works, then of course you've got to build all everything that goes with it. For instance, houses and churches and, and uh, everything else that you can think of, swimming baths. Doesn't matter, you think about it, the railways actually built it. The railways built for us probably one of the best parks in the whole of England which was built by the railway company and opened in 1888. A wonderful park and still is there for everyone to enjoy. Were they a benevolent employer? Uh, not always. Uh, in fact, in some instances, uh, quite the opposite. You had people who were, uh, put, should I say, put pressure on you to make sure that you attended work in a sober condition, which is not a bad idea, but also that you attended church. Um, for instance, Francis William Webb who was works manager and uh, politician and mayor of crew. Uh, he was here for over 50 years. What Webb said, that if you don't attend my brother's church, I'm afraid you might be having the sack tomorrow. Busy old place, crew. And, as if the station wasn't enough, Howard took me over to the Railway Age, a heritage museum based just across the tracks. There we met Anthony Hughes, one of the volunteers in the old North Junction signal box. Hi Tony, hi. What fabulous signal box, what's this all about then? Well the signal box is used to control all the traffic this side of crew. Right. It's a strange shape because it was designed as a bunker during the war in 1940. Really? Yeah, really. Lots to see at the Railway Age, many fine exhibits. Like, uh, well, this one. And this. Wow! Well, now, this looks like a very interesting locomotive. 3020. Crew works, I've noticed here. Crew works, indeed. Uh, uh, well, run us through this with its fantastic, oh. huge, whopping wheel here. It's one of the biggest wheels ever fitted to a locomotive. It's eight foot six in actual fact. It was designed because people thought the locomotive might topple over and it would be more stable with a big wheel. That was found not to be the case. It wasn't needed. Was it an effective way of moving forward? Oh, very, it's very smooth. When you see, I've got an old film at home. When you see it moving, it's graceful in its movement. It's really graceful. And it's called Cornwall, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Built November... 1847. 1847. And interestingly, standing more or less where it was built, because crew have started at this end of town and right. went across. So it's preserved more or less where it was built, which is fairly unique, really. What sort of speeds are we talking about with this only, locomotive? Only about 41 miles an hour. Yeah. But it was rocket ship science in those days. Of course, I mean, yeah, and because before that, what, stagecoaches? Stagecoaches, horse and carts. There wasn't even proper bicycles, even. I've always felt that something that looks right, works right. Yeah. And this engine was, was a good, good engine. Yeah. It worked well, it did everything it was supposed to do. It was quite a popular engine and would be extremely popular when it's back in its proper colours. British Rail made. British Rail made in crew yeah. in about 1951. Yeah, and this is the last class of locomotive to be made at crew. This is the last, this is Britannia the first of the Britannia class. Yeah. And the very last steam engine to be serviced in crew works was one of these. It was Oliver Cromwell. So this engine, this cluster engine is very important to crew.